Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Black Women Who Coach. In this uh, series, I like to talk with Black women who support and coach other Black women and other women and other people to be their best selves. Um, I am Anne Marie, the anti HRHR lady, and I put this series together to introduce the world to Black women who are coaches. You can also find all of the women that I'm coaching this series, this season, I'm sorry, on the Black Women Coach directory, which is blackwomencoach.com, which is a directory that I created to connect Black women coaches to the public and to people who need their services. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Kamani Norrington Sands, and she is a psychologist who coaches and supports Black women who are stuck in toxic hostile work environments, which you know is a favorite topic of mine as well. And so she works with women to help them free themselves from these types of work environments. Welcome, Kamani. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, first, thank you, Emory, for the invitation to be here today. Um, again, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in Los Angeles. I am a proud graduate of Spelman. Um, and so because of that history of Spelman and sisterhood and knowing about our greatness, I have taken it as my mission to channel my own inner Harriet to help Black women heal and leave toxic, hostile jobs. What inspired you to be a coach and, and what inspired you to do this work specifically? Through my own experiences in a toxic, hostile job, um, I uh, experienced the, the trauma of being in that environment. And because of the impact it had on me, I decided to share my story with, to help other Black women heal. And from that, you know, I started talking on YouTube about it. My YouTube channel is Lifting Us to Climb Consulting, Wellness Services. And from there, the more I talked about it to support my own healing, I felt the need to help other Black women also heal and to leave toxic hostile jobs. And why would you say this particular type of um, coaching that you provide is important? It's important because, and you, you know, we've talked about this too, but, you know, being in a toxic job can really kill you. So physically, psychologically, we know that research shows that Black women um, have higher rates of experiencing toxic work environments. We know that Black women are not supported by their supervisors in general. We know that uh, the American Heart Association has come out with research that Black women are now dying at earlier ages. We're developing cardiovascular disease earlier, and we're more prone to issues of like racism, sexism, toxic jobs. And so I want to help save Black women. Right. And, you know, I, I think that Black women, you know, many of us feel that if we get the the right education, the right credentials, the right job, that we um, can kind of work ourselves out of these things, but it doesn't matter what career you have, what education you level. In fact, I think the higher you go up, the more We're prone you are to the hostility. So I, again, am here to show Black women because of my own healing journey from a toxic job that you can leave, right? And that you need to leave to save yourself no job is worth your life, right? Your work does not define who you are and that life is so much better after you leave. So I wanna show black women healing is possible. You gotta get your mind right, right? So that's how I developed the coaching program because the coaching program that I have is to really help black women work through that workplace trauma so that they can clear that garbage, right? So they have the clarity in terms of looking at what are the next steps, right? So dealing with the grief, related to their previous job or their current job that they're trying to leave. And I would, I would also say that what I find, you know, cause what I do, which is very related to this subject is that I work with employees to help them identify when they're in discriminatory, hostile, toxic work environments. So when they're in work environments that are not just hostile and toxic, but are um, targeting them because of some type of special, um, whether it's race or another protected class, and helping them to negotiate their ways out. And what I find is that um, oftentimes, I think a lot of why we stay in these environments for so long, like some of my clients have been in these environments for a really long time before they come to talk to me, um, is that from a societal standpoint, we've been taught 
to be abused, right? Yeah. Especially black women. We are at the bottom of the totem pole. There's a there's a totem pole and hierarchy in the United States. We're at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we've been taught, and as I just said to someone in another interview, I don't think collectively as black people, we don't even know, really understand know what freedom is. Right. Because we, in the United States, we experience a partial equality. We're not equal citizens. What's well, an illusion? We, it's an illusion. And so it's an it's an illusory thing. I call I refer to the United States as a gilded cage. And so most of us don't even know what freedom actually feels like or looks like, right? And so we accept a lot of things because it's what we've always accepted, right? Yeah. And even if it's a little bit better, you know, they're not calling you the N-word at the water cooler anymore. But they're treating you that way. But they're treating you like one, but they're not yeah. calling, saying it out loud to your face. Right. Because parents like we're regressing right back to that. Um yeah. So a lot of us think, well, that's good enough, but it's yeah. not good enough. And no. I think we all know deep down that it's not good enough. And I think that's why the health impacts that you're talking yes. about are yes. happening because you try to bury something. You try to not see something that's right in front of your face. Yes. That you are a second class citizen and it doesn't matter how many letters you have behind your name. Nope. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't nope. matter what nice community that you live in. It doesn't change your status in this country as a second class citizen. Right. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there are things that can happen to you in a split second that will never happen to them and that Absolutely. they don't have to know about. And yes. so I think that that has an effect on you and on your mental and physical health over time. Absolutely. So I think that is closely tied to. And I wouldn't even add spiritual too. Cause oh, I remember yeah. when I was in that situation, I was literally praying to God, like, God, why is this happening to me? Like what, what, why, why would, why would you put me in this situation? Right. However, the more I listened and I paused and I took a leave of absence from that place, the more I was able to hear the voice of God say, you don't belong there. You deserve something better. And all of this is to push you out to something better. Right? Well, I think that, you know, I think that all of us have voices. I'm not a religious person, but I think all of us, I think women in particular have been gifted with intuition mm -hmm. and we have, vo all of us have voices in our heads that if we listen, yeah. that if we have the opportunity to sit still and listen, yes. we can hear what you really should do. And often what you really should do is scary to you. So you mm -hmm. resist the idea. Some of us have never not worked since yes. we were 15 or 16 years old. And the idea of not having a job terrifies us, right? Yes. And so we're willing to be in really horrible situations mm -hmm. just to have a job and to get that paycheck. And I think that we need to give ourselves permission yeah. to not be treated like crap. Yeah. I think that a lot of us you know, are waiting for someone else to come and save us and waiting for someone else to tell us that it's okay for us to quit. Yeah. Stop with the body. Yeah, you already know what you need to do. It's just a matter of doing it, right? Because we, you know, are used to your custom, you know, if you know, if you're accustomed to something, even when it's bad, mm -hmm. it's what you're accustomed to. Yeah. And the alternative is something you don't understand and you've never experienced. So it's gonna be scary, even though the alternative is probably better for you in a lot of yeah. these cases. Because many times you're living a worse nightmare now. Yeah, leaving is the best thing, but we don't know where well, that's not something we're accustomed to doing. We're accustomed yeah. to staying and yeah. taking the bad treatment. Yeah, right? until you the literally abuse. can't. You can't yes. take it anymore. Um, my you, my next question is, you know, it's kind of obvious, and so I'm going to ask it, but I think we both know the answer, which is why having a black woman doing this particular work is a value added, and I think you know, we would agree that it's because this, we experience work in very specific ways. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And so you said, you know, your work is, comes out of your experience, your lived uh -huh. experience. And you're a psychologist. This is what yes. I'm talking about. You're a psychologist. And yet you had this experience. Yes. You know, I'm an executive and a trained attorney. And yet I had this experience more than yes. one time. So both yes. of what we do has grown out of our lived experience. And I think especially in these kinds of situations at work, it's mm -hmm. very difficult to talk to somebody who doesn't have the same lived experience as you mm -hmm. about what's happening. And that's where a lot of the grass lighting and the microaggressions when you go to HR and other places asking for assistance mm -hmm. and they're trying to pretend that what's happening to you isn't real. It right. really helps to be able to talk to somebody. Yeah. Yeah knows exactly that what you are describing is real. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about why you think 
being a black woman is a value add to the kind of work that you do. Because one thing I, you know, there's a saying that says when America um, catches a cold, black people catch pneumonia. And mm-hmm. I think it's the same in the workplace. I mean, yeah. I have clients who are not black people. Mm-hmm. Employers are abusing people across the board, right? Sure. But sure. some of the, but the most egregious abuse I ever hear is the things that happen to us yes. as women in the workplace. So can you talk a little bit about why you think being a black woman and doing this work is a value add for your clients? Yes. I want to respond to something uh, a little bit before that. And I'm going to go to that, to that response or answer that, that question. So the first thing I wanted to say was um, I want to validate the fear that we have about leaving toxic jobs, even though we know it's killing us. We know it on, uh, crying on our way to work leaving work, crying, right? We know that it's hurting us, but the fear often keeps us there. The fear of what's next, the fear of I have bills to pay, that's something that we address in my coaching program, right? So I want us to recognize that the fear doesn't mean stay there. Mm -hmm. The fear means, okay, I recognize the fear. How do I work through it, right? And if that means going to another job, if it means starting your own business, right? We talk about that in the coaching program. The other thing I wanted to say is that I think the challenge for many Black women is not only have we been taught to stay at these places, we have people around us telling us to, to stay, right? Mm-hmm. Our family, our friends, right? Don't leave that job. That's a good job. Don't What you going to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So they project their fears onto us. And right. so we're holding onto that. And so when you talk about why is a Black woman uniquely, you know, uh, uh, prepared, right? to do this work is that, yes, we have a similar lived experience. Our experiences are not identical, but we have a certain level of understanding. There are certain things I can never explain to someone else for them to fully understand that, right? The other thing is I have gone through what I'm teaching you, right? Mm -hmm. So I have gone through the process. I am still healing. You talked about this too, Emery, that as a toxic job, toxic hostile work job survivor, that we are always healing. We are continuing to heal. And so the coaching program helps you kind of jump off the healing, but to recognize that healing is an ongoing process. So again, I understand I've been there. And from my experiences, not only in terms of what I experienced, but also as a clinical psychologist and my work with other Black women in therapy and coaching, that's how I developed my coaching program. What kind, what would you say is the ideal client because what you do and even what I do, it's very niche, right? Like, you know, I don't personally know anybody that does what I do, right? And I don't think I know any psychologist that does specifically like what you do either. Mm -hmm. So it's more, what kind of qualities are you looking for in the first people that you accept as clients? Like, what are you looking for in a person that comes to you to to do this work with you? Yes. So I'm looking for Black women who are ready to leave their toxic job. So if you're coming to me and you're saying, oh, I'm coming so you can teach me some strategies so I can cope being there. I'm not the person for you. Mm -hmm. I do not believe you can heal in the same environment that's harming you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I say ready to leave, I'm not saying ready to leave today or tomorrow. What I'm saying is you're ready to, okay, let's plan out what I need to do. But I recognize that I got some psychological blocks. I got some trauma. I got some scars that I need to address. That's the woman. Those those are Black women that I think are good candidates and that you're willing to do the work, right? Because there is homework, right? Mm -hmm. And that you're willing to be in community with other Black women. So I have a group option and then I have the VIP one-to-one option. Some people just don't do well in groups, right? Or some people want more of that individualized attention. So I have the group for those who want that community of support. And then I also have the one-to-one VIP option as well. But you would say your number one requirement is that they be prepared to leave. I have a very similar requirement. I don't work with people who want to stay no. in a bad job in situation. I I'm can't like, collude with your gonna, impression. I, I can't. Yeah, I'm not going to help that. you stay in a bad situation. Yes. Um, I can. I, I'm only going to help you if you want to get out. I'm not going to work with people that want strategies for staying in a bad situation. Because um, it's not going to be helpful. Yeah, it's not helpful. Um, no. What would you say, tell us a little bit about, um, you just talked a little bit about your coaching program and your group option. Are there any other um, initiatives that you want people to talk, to know about that you're working on? I know you just did an interview with Tavis Smiley because I just watched it. Yeah. That was really cool. Thank you. Um, What else are you um, doing 
that you want your audience, you, you want my audience or your audience to know about? Well, I definitely want to announce our masterclass is coming up. So you and I are collaborating on our masterclass about how to save yourself or saving yourself from a toxic hostile job, channeling your inner Harriet so that you can leave a toxic hostile job with your sanity and your coins. So that's coming up. I'm super excited about that. So I know that we'll share more information with both of our audiences about that. So that's the one thing. The second thing is that I'm continuing to do videos on my YouTube channel, Lifting As We Climb Consulting Wellness Services, because I want to serve all Black women, right? And on my YouTube channel, I've interviewed Black women from around the world. And we've talked a lot about US, but just to be clear, this is going on globally for it Black is. women. So this, this harm, this toxicity is harming all of us. So I want to provide a platform for all Black women to be able to access for free on my YouTube channel, again, Lifting Us With Climb Consulting Wellness Services. And the third offering I have is the Welcome to Your Queendom Digital Fillable Workbook, because I know when I was at that toxic job, not only the harm, the harm also was that I started beating up myself, right? So we talked about the self-gaslighting. I also blame myself, like, well, why are you staying here? Why are you tolerating this stuff, right? So I felt disconnected from myself. I was so lost, right? Now, therapy helped me, but I was so lost. And so I developed a roadmap for myself about how to reconnect to myself and how to get out of that place, right? So I packaged that into the Welcome to Your Queendom Digital Fillable Workbook, and you can access that on my website as well. Great. And yes, Kamani just mentioned, she and I are working on a joint collaboration. By the time you see this video, um, you'll probably have seen a lot more about the collaboration that we're doing together. We're doing a joint masterclass. Um, it will be happening probably the week um, after you actually see this video air. So um, hopefully by then, many of you will be signed up for it. But we will be working together and teaching participants both about how to protect your soul as well as how to get your money um, when you are in a discriminatory and or hostile toxic workplace, um, how to, you know, as Kamani said, channel your inner Harriet and save yourself. Um, because as I always tell people, the Calvary is not coming and you are going to have to do this yourself. No one is coming to save you. Yeah. Um, so you're going to have, when you're in these kinds of situations, you have to develop a strategy and execute it independently to save your own self, but it is an undertaking worth it. It's a well, well worth it undertaking, but it is one that you have to commit to for yourself. So we will be teaching strategies, both from a mind body um, perspective, as well as practical, um, you know, strategies that you can implement in terms of how you uh, inter initiate uh, interactions with human resources, with your managers um, to negotiate your way out when you realize that you are not only in a hostile toxic work environment, but one in which you are also experiencing discrimination so that you can get your, mat, your, your employer to pay you to go. And so you can have the money to go do whatever it is that you want, whether it is starting a new job, taking a dream vacation, buying that new car you had your eye on. You know, me, I, I never even concerned myself with what people do with the money that they get. I just want them to get it. Um, and not leave if they are being treated, um, you know, mistreated and being subjected to behavior that is in fact illegal. Um, so that is something I'm really excited that we're going to be doing. And hopefully when you're watching this, we'll be a week or so away from launching the masterclass, which is going to happen in June, 2024. Um, my last question for you, Kamani is June what is 23? Oh, I'm sorry. June, 2023. I'm already a year ahead. Um, what is one important thing that you've learned about yourself through coaching um, clients and coaching other people? I've learned to be okay with sharing my story. Um, I'm a very private person. So I've learned that the more I share my story, YouTube, coaching, the more Black women relate to my experience, right? So the more that I learned that so many of us are hurting mm -hmm. and the more that I learned that I, I love helping people get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I never knew that this was my lane, right? So when I was at that other job, I never thought about something like this. But now I know that this is my lane. And now I know that I can help Black women lead. And again, I, we talked about this, Amory. I've never met a Black woman that I've helped or that I've known who's ever regretted leaving a toxic hostile job. Never. 
myself Never. included. Never, Never, right? So that's what I've learned is that I can help you leave and do well after you leave. Yeah, I think I think that's very true that I've never also never experienced anyone ever saying, I wish I had stayed at that job. And I, I hate the fact that you helped me leave, right? <laughs> right. Um, even, even people who have left and ended up having to, you know, hire a lawyer or file a complaint. Because um, with me in a perfect world, you don't end up doing any of those things. But even people who have ended up with, with, you know, employers that were so hateful that they wouldn't negotiate with them and they ended up having to take act- other action, they still were glad yep. that they stood up to the employer and that they left the, yep. um, the, the, the organization that was abusing them. So yep. it feels a lot of times scary to people, the concept of it, right, mm-hmm. of leaving, right? Because like, you know, like we've said, this is what most of us are used to. Mm-hmm. It's not, not only are a lot of us suffering, it's a very common experience. If you yeah. are a black person, you are going to have a discriminatory experience at work at some point. Mm-hmm. I hate to say, but that's just a fact. It's going to happen to you at some point, right? Mm-hmm. And unfortunately for a lot of us, it happens more than one time. And yes. it's just, the higher up you go, the more likely that you're going to deal yes, kind of thing, right? Because yes. then you resent the fact that you're even there. Yeah. Can I, just say, are... can I just say something right quick about pets a threat, right? Yeah. So just think about many times as Black women, we're called into the glass cliff, right? We're brought into an impossible situation. No way you can succeed. If you happen to, let's say, downfall, right? Even though you're brought in in an unattainable situation, then you take the blame for it. But also there's a concept of pet to threat. And I think a lot of Black women encounter this where we are sought out because of our stellar- Because we're Black and we're women. Right. We're shining. We're doing great things. We're right? the shiny we're little penny is what I yes. call it. Oh, yeah. Look at, that, look at that Negro, right? She's, she's a good one, right? The so magic Negro. So you're brought in and you do a really good job, right? So you're shining. You're doing a fabulous job, right? So you are the pet. But as soon as you start outshining certain people or calling out certain things, you quickly become the threat, right? Mm -hmm. And when you become the threat, then that discrimination, then that hostility, Mm -hmm. then that pushing out, right? All of that. So I think a lot of Black women really resonate with that. And I just want to give credit to the researchers of Pets a Threat. So three Black women, Dr. Juanita Johnson-Bailey, Dr. Keisha Thomas, and Dr. Rosemary Phelps, right? So many of us have experienced Pets a Threat. Many of us, because I think what you said, and it can often be a combination of things, because I often tell people, I don't think I ever got a job where I wasn't coming in to fix a problem. Mm-hmm. Number one, that people that they couldn't find nobody that looked like them to fix. Right. And then you come in to fix it and you point out to them that they have to do something different to fix mm-hmm. it and they don't want to. Right. So then you're the problem because you, you're asking them to change their behavior to change right. something. Even though you were called in to do that. Even though they hired you to do it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so then they start to attack, you know, your your communication style, your this, your that. Not a good team player. With any of those things. Yeah. They don't like what you're saying and they don't like who's saying it. Exactly. Two things. They don't like what you're saying and they don't like that you are telling them. How dare you? You stay in your place. They don't want to do. And so we're kind of in an impossible, untenable situation. Yeah. And you're being gaslit and told that there are all these different things that is that it's about you, but it really yes. isn't. And no. so I think that for a lot of us, it's inevitable to experience this, you know, especially if you're highly educated and you're in the corporate environment as a black woman, you're going to experience it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's really a question of us being better positioned to deal with it when it happens. Yeah. Cause it's one of those things that's kind of inevitable on, unfortunately, yeah. And so more of us need to be better prepared yeah. um, for when this, when this occurs, because we yeah. all will experience, especially when management middle yeah. or upper the pet to threat phenomenon, there's yeah. no question. I yeah. was you know, the first time I read it, I was like, Oh my God, they finally gave it a name. Yes. I, you know, you recognize it immediately. Right. Yes. And the shiny penny thing. I've been the shiny penny many, many times. Right. Yeah. And so it's a, it's an unnecessary and unfair burden that we have to deal with. Yeah. Um, and so it, and it has a, as you said, it, it has a significant psychic harm. Yes. Especially when you don't understand what is happening to you and it's happening. Yes. In it. 
So yeah. I'm really glad that, you know, we have, we are giving people the tools to name these things and to recognize them and yeah. then to figure out how to, to get the hell out of it. Cause that's my yeah. main thing. Yeah. And reject, the, and reject the, the lie that we tell to ourselves that if I leave, they win. No, sis, no. you're losing. You're oh, losing yeah, your life. That's the thing. I just said that to you're someone. You're not winning. This idea about quitting. I'm like, be a quitter. <laughs> I am a quitter. I'm a professional quitter. And I will tell you to quit in a minute. I am not here for the suffering. We need to get off the cross and let somebody else have the wood. We need right. to stop being the martyr and thinking that we are going to be the one that's going to change it. And oh my God, if I leave, what's going to happen? Exactly what's happening now. That's what's going to happen because right. they don't want the institution to change and right. you can't make them change it if they no. don't want to change it. No, so and you will be the target stay. and and, and right. And the sacrificial lamb. Yes. So don't stay and fight with someone over their company. Let them do what they want with their company. Right. And mm -hmm. or they're trying to get their health benefits, right? Talking right. about, oh, they got good benefits, but it's killing you. Yeah. So what's the good of having health benefits? It doesn't like make sense. You? But these are all the things that we tell ourselves because we're afraid to leave. Yes. Right? And so yes. we give ourselves all these different excuses. And so yeah. as you said, you know, when you recognize that it's fair and you recognize how it's playing itself out, you're in a better position to respond to that more effectively and still yes. do the thing that in the end is more to your benefit than staying and suffering um, in an environment that doesn't even want you there. Doesn't right? even want you. It doesn't even want you there. So thank you so much, Kamani, for being here and doing this conversation with me. Um, as I said, by the time you see this, we will be much closer to doing our joint masterclass as this um, episode is going to air in June. So hopefully you'll be seeing like the week or two before um, the master class launches. And I hope many of you will be participants in that class because it will be very beneficial if you are in a, a toxic hostile workplace, you believe that you might be also being subjected to discrimination and you wanna leave. This is a class that you want to register for and participate in. It will be two days and we will be announcing details about it on social media um, in the near future. So you'll be hearing much more about it. Um, thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this episode and this series, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next episode of Conversations with Black Women Who Coach. See you next time. Bye.